Thanks for joining the Offsite Wood Design and Digital Practice Roundtable Series number one. The theme today is going to be BIM is about collaboration. BIM being building information modeling is a broad topic. I'm bringing this whole community together to look at some trends as they relate to off-site wood and wood structures and modeling within the virtual design and construction space. My name is Eli Gould. I'm the U.S. Representative and Architectural Liaison for QWeb, a nonprofit Quebec Wood Export Bureau. And over the past year I've helped lead the build of a pretty impressive piece of software that plugs into Revit. But before we get to the soft launch of that and how to look at features, we're going to be starting this series out with a series of basics. And the series today is going to have a great group of guys from Boston who have been beta testers and involved in the rollout of our software while we've supported them. Uh, hi Eli, thanks for that. Um, I'm the business development manager for Nordic Structures. I've uh, been working with the company for 20 years and uh, kind of uh, involved myself in the early phases when Nordic had made the decision to build a CLT plant, but uh, before there was any real demand in the market. And uh, Nordic's path uh, to, to building CLT and mass timber projects I think is really informed a lot by, by the journey that we had to take. Um, because of the lack of demand, uh, we became our own development company. But I think I recall when I told you I had this, this really cool young team out of Boston um, who was going for a seven-story wood structure with no podium in 70 feet. You might have raised an eyebrow at me on that one, and, and, and we might have not been sure these guys were going to be able to, to do that. Can you give us some hints how hard that is? Well, uh, yeah, I think... I think maybe my my jaw dropped and the, and the eyebrows raised and you know a little bit of incredulity. I, you know when you consider seven stories and seventy feet, first thing that happens is you're looking at a floor to floor height of less than ten. So a judicious application of structure, um, making sure that the load path uh, allows for for good design, that you have symmetry in the building. So we hadn't had a lot of success actually uh, developing res multifamily res in the U.S. There, there had been some projects that we had executed successfully, um, in, and actually the uh, the very first multifamilies that were done were uh, for the U.S. Army. Fortunately for us, we had had experience in Quebec, uh, Montreal specifically, which is a very aggressive market. Uh, concrete is incredibly cheap, and we were building uh, eight, nine-story uh, buildings using mass timber, and to be able to be competitive in that in that concrete jungle. Uh, thank you, Eli. Uh, my name is Patrick Hayden. My company is Haycon. Uh, I work very closely with the real estate um, uh, development group called Boston Real Estate Collaborative. We're partners in this project. Um, we oftentimes work with Monty and Alex and Renz from uh, MFDS and HNO. We've kind of grown from, you know, doing smaller developments, much like many developers in the area and abroad, to doing these sort of middle market projects. Um, getting, you know, from a resiliency standpoint, it's terrific because there's no mechanicals in the basement, there's no people, there's no program. And at first glance, the cost of, on a per square foot basis is very competitive to the five over two that we've built in the, in the past two projects. Uh, we work very collaboratively and closely on these types of projects, and it's very fluid, which I think is the way to do it. You know, there's not a bunch of work done in one in one vacuum or another, where you know where you, where you have to go in reverse and redo stuff. On the ground floor, we have uh, a small mechanical room for services and water sewer connections and whatnot. Um, we have a small amenity space over on the left, and then over on the right, we have uh, a parking garage. The vertical point loads for the structure are, I think we have 31 or so um, uh, glue lamb posts that run up uh, up and down the building. And I think 24 of them land uh, straight down into. Uh... To speak a little bit more to mass timber on the structure side at seven stories, um, an often complicated coordination piece, especially with building heights and column layouts, is when you do a five on two podium, that level two often wants to be a residential floor. And what happens is you're trying to marry 
the the second floor to the top residential floors, but it also has to have some program alignment with the first floor. And it creates a lot of challenge when your podium is at level three, and then you have to often transfer that again at level two. So it adds some complexity, some challenges. Um, this double beam structure allowed us to, A, uh, reduce the, the depth of the beams um, so that uh, we'd have more clearance under the beams, but also um, most of our partition and demising walls fall right on those beam lines so we can run vertical services straight down um, in the grid line, uh, which is something that you typically never do, uh, you know, especially with, say, steel and concrete, you know, you're always trying to avoid uh, plumbing drops and whatnot on your grid lines and on your main structural lines. But with this double beam system, we've got a six inch gap that allows us to run um, almost everything vertically. Um, and then also with this double beam system, we've got a kind of central corridor, which may be a little bit difficult to see, but you can see the stair in the background. We've got uh, a clear span corridor that we can run our larger horizontal services um, in a plenum, um, and then it can transition um, north-south in the project. Before I take it, I, I have to speak to uh, to Alex's last comments and, and just talk about how how open-minded and, and unique the approach is that you know, we we come to a developer and an architect and an engineer and say, look, you know, if we're going to do this, we're going to have to do a double beam configuration. And rather than looking at that as a limitation, they looked at it as an opportunity to to look at something unique and taking that whole vertical pathway for the services through the opening in the beams to me is is just indicative of the the can do approach it out we're able to pull the columns in from the the exterior wall so that does two things one obviously at the foundation it pulled it away from the lot line so you're going to get loads on centered on the foundation elements instead of having offset foundations the other thing it does is it allows us to cantilever and give maximum flexibility at that exterior facade so architecturally um, even from a building envelope pers uh, perspective it simplifies that detail and also gives flexibility you can have full height windows up to the bottom of the clt plank gives a real thin profile on the exterior of the building uh, the double beam actually sits on a notch seat on this at the top of the column. So the center of the column actually continues up between the two beams, which achieves two things. We're able to have continuity of the column load path. So the column up, the column on the floor above gets to land and pass load directly into the column below. We don't have to pass that load parallel to the grain through the beam of the CLT plank. So it's a column to column connection and we can still achieve that those beams can cantilever by the column without interrupting it. Uh, the key detail on that joint is we also, with a mass timber building, the char performance is how it achieves its fire rating. So we have to we have to analyze all these sections uh, under under charge conditions. And the beams actually protect the center of the column and become the char layer on the center of the column at the connection, which I think is a really important point. So super conservative, super solid building. I think I think it's been awesome to see um, with IBC 2021 and Tallwood coming. This is a very conservative and solid look at the type of strategies that will become employed. The important thing with mass timber to consider is that unlike steel concrete and and uh, also light gauge on podium the the typical types of projects that they were involved in in the past uh, a lot of times the integration of the of the follow-on sub trades uh, happens at a much later date so this is part of the pathway that we uh, that we engage in so now we're we're in a collaborative effort with the designers and with their sub trades uh, looking at the mechanical systems, uh, making sure that the pathways that we have established are not going to be in shear sensitive areas. Mechanical systems typically are going to have larger openings. Um, we're manufacturing everything with CNC equipment at the plant. Um, and the more we integrate with the, uh, with the mechanical systems, with the plumbers and electricians, the more we can define the pathways for the elements that are gonna be coming through afterwards.
So we're also going to be working with the, uh, the installation crew to make sure that we're sequencing that in a fashion that makes the most sense. In some cases on larger jobs, we may look at going vertical by sector as opposed to doing an entire floor. So these are also parts of the path uh, that we engage in. Well, I can tell this is a job we're going to have to check back in on continuously as we go forward. And I want to thank you guys all for being here and sharing this little story. And we'll we'll come back to check on you some more as the project keeps on going. Thanks, Eli. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eli. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening through right to the end of a dense presentation. Some guys that are really at the top of their game, as you can see. A lot of tools, a lot of things going on that uh, happen quickly, and my own amateur editing skills may have chopped it up a little bit, but I wanted to make sure you saw some highlights. And please do share your comments, questions for the, the roundtable themselves. And really the take home here is that there's a lot more great collaboration going on behind the scenes than people often realize. And from the nonprofit Quebec Wood Export, point of view here. I am going to do some more member showcases like this to show the good quiet evolution of collaborative practice that happens across the border pretty commonly. It's not always visible. But in the next round table on the topic of BIM practice, I thought there's really a need for the definitions. The BIM for dummies idea is not really not really dummies. There's a lot of great business owners and other non-Revit users who really want to understand what's going on, what the different trends are, what all the different softwares they hear about. So we're really lucky on this software project to have had a trusted advisor right on through. Nicholas Catelier from Revit Pure is a well-known Revit training expert. He's helped me with the dashboard for architects, the understanding of the different ways in which architects are using the Revit content. And he and I are going to take an attempt at the BIM overview will both be kind of at the edge of our expertise, but in doing it in an informal chat fashion, looking at different tools, trying to break through some of the jargon that fills up this whole space so everybody can understand what the tools are. And then in the following weeks, we'll be proceeding into a real close look at the offsite wood plugin for Revit. So thanks again for being involved and your comments, shares, likes and invite your friends. Take care.